So for the past 21 days, I've been traveling Bali and Singapore. I travel quite frequently and I know a lot of you struggle with trying to stay on track, stay in shape when you're either traveling for work or holidays. So in this video, I'm going to teach you five things that I like to do to help me stay on track and to help me stay in shape while having a good time. I love eating, I love training, so I try to find a way to be able to do both. Subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about building muscle and losing fat. One, have a realistic goal. Again, you're probably traveling for vacation or work. There's no reason for you to try to lose weight while overseas. It's possible, but it's going to be more difficult and you're going to make the whole experience less enjoyable and less practical. So while we're away, your goal is to maintain. And even if you gain a bit of weight or even a lot of weight, that's easily fixable with the right plan when you come back home. So don't even worry. If you come home, step on the scale and spike up seven kilos after one week, don't even worry, most of it is probably water. And you can lose that very quickly. I was in Thailand for about a week and gained seven kilos after eating everything I saw. As I said, I love food, especially cakes and desserts. When I came back, I continued with my program, stuck to my plan and I was back on track. In one week, I lost seven kilos and it really wasn't that difficult. With that, I'll make a separate video teaching you how to lose weight fast in a sustainable and safe manner. So make sure you subscribe. Two, create a plan. You're probably worried that you'll also start losing muscle. This only happens after three weeks of complete inactivity. So don't even worry about that. I do highly recommend going to the gym at least three times a week, giving your body enough stimulus or enough reason to hold on to as much muscle as possible. When I'm overseas, I either do push for legs or three full body sessions. You don't need to be super strict. Where a lot of people go wrong is that they think they're a bodybuilder. You're not. You work a nine to five job or you're traveling with friends and family and you're trying to have a good time. Bodybuilders don't do that. So stop trying to do what bodybuilders do if you're not a bodybuilder. You can still develop an amazing physique without having to eat chicken and rice, train six to seven times a week and skip on desserts. It's super important to have realistic goals. So just train to mechanical failure, four to seven exercises and two to three sets on each exercise. Keep it simple, don't overcomplicate it. To add extra volume, you can incorporate drop sets or supersets or even giant sets, depending on how much time you have available. I'd also recommend having a daily step target. Now you don't need to follow this super religiously, but I try to aim between 10,000 to 14,000 steps per day. It sounds like a lot, but it's not that difficult when you're traveling. When I was in America, I was doing like 14 to 30,000 steps a day, just because we were walking everywhere. Three, calorie banking. Now food management is where everybody goes wrong. Just because you're on holiday doesn't mean your stomach is. Go out, go eat, try out different foods, but don't be stupid. Implement calorie banking so you can eat at restaurants, have desserts, have your cookies, have your cakes, and still be flexible with your diet. So let's say you are tracking your calories and your goal is to hit 2,500 calories per day. I'd eat around 1,000 calories throughout the day, primarily being protein, and allocate the remaining 1,500 calories of carbs and fats to later meals. But let's be honest, you probably won't be tracking your food or probably won't even be bothered to track your food. Which brings us to number four, fasting. Fasting really helps with calorie management. Now this isn't a hall pass. 3,000 calories before 8 p.m. is the same as 3,000 calories after 8 p.m. Calories don't go to sleep. So when I'm traveling, I try to fast till 1 p.m. To help with appetite suppression, I'll have black coffee. And then for the first meal of the day, I'll try to keep it very lean. High proteins and very low carbs and fats. Then for dinner, I like to go to a nice restaurant, have a main meal, followed by desserts. Now your main meal can be meat-based or carb-based, so that's rice, potatoes, pastas. But I still try to avoid oily, greasy foods. It's high in calories, bad for my skin and terrible for my digestion. And as I said, I have a massive sweet tooth, so I love to smash desserts. I might have a cake, I might have two, I might have a cookie, I might have three. <laughs> now for anabolic assurance, you can regulate protein intake every two to three hours, eating anywhere between 15 to 30 grams of protein. Doing this will also help you reach your daily protein target, minimizing muscle loss as much as possible. Don't overthink it, don't overcomplicate it, just keep it simple. Number five, facility management. To save some money and to save some calories, I highly, highly recommend staying in an accommodation with the kitchen. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can also just use a microwave, but personally, I don't like eating all my meals out. It gets expensive, my digestion doesn't respond well, and I start to feel like shit. You'll probably feel the same. So again, highly recommend staying at a location or an accommodation with a kitchen available. It doesn't have to be a full-on kitchen. Again, a microwave, a grill, anything that you can cook on or heat up food. My go-to is always tuna, oats, protein powder. Great essentials, super cheap, super affordable, and super versatile. And you don't need a lot of equipment to prepare it. Number six, restaurant selection. I always look for places that cook high quality foods. And in Bali, it's cheap, it's affordable, and it's everywhere. Sometimes you'll even be able to look up the calories and the macros on MyFitnessPal, depending on the restaurant that you're going to. And sometimes they even have it on their menu. When I'm traveling, I primarily look at protein and calorie content. Fats and carbs, I kind of let it take its place. When I'm traveling, I primarily look at protein and calorie content. 
I'll either log into my fitness pal or keep a mental log. Again, you can still eat out, spend time with friends, family, check out different restaurants. Just make slightly better choices. And again, by constantly eating like shit, you're gonna start feeling like shit. So save yourself the headache. Seven, here's a few things that I recommend you bringing. I typically travel with a food scale, and no, this is not an eating disorder. There's nothing wrong with wanting to know what you're putting in your body. And sometimes I like to bring a body weight scale, just depending on how strict I wanna be. This just helps with data management and will be able to help you make better decisions. Just remember that your body weight will be changing a lot due to so many different variables. Don't let that ruin your holiday. Instead, just use it as feedback to better manage your future choices. Again, if you go overseas, gain a bunch of weight, come back home, don't even worry. Just stay on plan, follow your protocols, get back on diet. It doesn't need to be complicated. Don't stress, go out, go enjoy. I love the gym. I started training when I was 16, but a big chunk of my life, that's the only thing that mattered to me. And I feel like I had a lot of years that I lost. If I can go back in time, I would tell myself to not stress too much and just enjoy it from time to time. There's nothing wrong with it. You're not gonna become super skinny. It really comes down to experience and practice. I've done this so many times before. I may not be in the best shape right now, but I don't care. I'm gonna go back home, get back in routine. I absolutely love training. I started training when I was 16. But one thing I wish I didn't do so much was let training control my entire fucking life. When you're traveling, when you're on holiday, you're not going to look like your best. And you just need to accept that. You definitely can, depending on what your goals and priorities are. Sometimes when I travel, because of my nature of work, I have to be in front of the camera. I take content, I take photos with other people. You can't show up looking like shit. It's like going to a meeting, everybody is in tuxedos and suits, and you're in a singlet and flip-flops. It just makes you look bad. Presentation equals opportunity. But sometimes, I also like to travel, meet cool people, have fun, try different foods, try different cultures. And I don't care as much now because I know for a fact that I can go back home, start a new program, get back in my diet, and I'll look good again. In the grand scheme of things, I'm away for three weeks. Not that long. I've been trained for eight years, so don't even worry about it. Just go out, enjoy, but again, depends on what your goals are. The reason I make this video is because I don't want you guys to stress about whether or not you're falling off track or you're losing muscle while you're away. When you are overseas, try not to gain too much weight because then it might make things more difficult when coming back. So I hope this video helps make better choices, but still have a good time. If you wanna learn more about building muscle, losing fat, getting rid of those stubborn love handles or building some size to look good for the beach, get those cap delts, build those shoulders, slim down that waist, join the evolution program. We've helped hundreds of men get into the best shape of their lives whilst eating their favorite meals and working around their lifestyle, their schedules, their commitments with work, family, whatever it is. I've personally worked with entrepreneurs and business owners that makes over six figures a month. So if that's you, or if you simply struggle with food management, accountability, don't know where to start, click the link in my bio for more information.